The Dutch education system is unfair. At least that's my current opinion, based off of what I learned from Dutch people and research online. You see, the education system here in the Netherlands is a very, very complex one. But in a nutshell, kids go to school with each other until the age of around 11 or 12. And then from there, they take a test and receive advice from a teacher that basically splits them up into three different groups. And these three different groups really dictate your job opportunities going forward. And to be honest, a big part of your life. And as an outsider looking in, this just doesn't really seem fair to me. I mean, so much could dictate your educational level at the age of 12 or 11, and in your teen years, you're expected to kind of choose your career path, and your interests just change so much between your teen years and when you're an adult. But that's just my perception based off of what I know so far, and I really want to test that. So in this video, I'll sit with a college professor here in the Netherlands to really understand how the system works here, and I'll also speak with some people on the streets to understand what was their experience with the Dutch school system. And after that, I'll determine whether or not my opinion changes. Um, you know, as me trying to learn about the Dutch educational system, I was very keen to speak with you as a teacher here in this country to kind of get information and the understanding from you of how it works here. So before I really share about my opinions and what I think of it, I'm just curious to hear from you. How would you explain how the system works here in this country? Basically, all students start at um, primary school. Yeah. And we have eight grades in primary school. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the students have to make tests Mm -hmm. And those tests are uh, used to assess their level. Because after primary school, we have secondary school. <clears throat> and are, there are basically three levels um, within secondary school. And those are like MBO, HAFO, and VWO, which is the highest. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they are assessed in the seventh grade and then again in the eighth grade. Okay. And on based on that, they get their advice, mm -hmm. basically. And is it a standard test that everyone, everyone takes the same exact yeah. test? Yeah. Okay. They are usually, at that point, I think they're 11 or 12 years old yeah and that advice it determines the rest of their their school career quick time out before i get a lot of angry comments i want to lay a few ground rules for this video first i'm aware there are a lot of different parts of the dutch education system that are not covered in this video but it's so complex of a system that it'd be impossible to cover it all second this video isn't meant to compare the american system and the dutch system and say the american system is better no i'm just trying to analyze the dutch system and understand if my opinion is valid or just challenge my opinion in general. And lastly, for any Dutch people or anyone that's gone through the Dutch education system, let me know in the comments, what was your experience like? What's your opinion? Thank you and continue watching. Hey, what for niveau have you done for your uploading? Uh, VBO. Uh, HBO. I have done more about school VBO and then I'm going to go to the university. I have done more uploading. I have done level 2 and level 3. All of them MBO. Okay, what would you say was your experience uh, in the Nederlandse school system? My experience is good, but I have studied in Belgium at the end of my master. So it was a bewuste choice. It was a bit easier with cameras. I have different opinions over. Bij voorbeeld. Het is uh, redelijk complex en je bent um, best wel afhankelijk van wat er wordt bepaald wanneer je 12 jaar bent. En dan weet je gewoon nog niet zo heel erg veel. Maar het is wel heel erg bepalend eigenlijk voor de rest van je toekomst. En dat is best wel lastig. Maar ik ben benieuwd, was je al bewust over die toen jij 11 of 12 was? Of is het niet iets nieuws dat je merkt? Het weegt best wel zwaar, die, de, de CITO-toets die je doet op je 12 e Dus je weet wel van oké, okay, hier moet ik wel echt even presteren. Maar... Je bent gewoon verder en ook nog heel erg druk met andere dingen. Je zit in je puberteit en, en school is gewoon op dat moment niet het allerbelangrijkste in je leven. Dus ik denk niet dat je, ondanks dat het een, een belangrijk moment is, dat je niet helemaal realiseert hoe belangrijk het eigenlijk is voor wat er daarna allemaal gaat gebeuren. Ik denk aan de ene kant is het wel ergens logisch dat je wordt ingedeeld op wat je kan, zeg maar je potentieel. Aan de andere kant denk ik niet dat voor iedereen, omdat ze bijvoorbeeld goed in wiskunde zijn of in biologie, dat ze ook meteen goed in talen zijn. Dus dat ze iedereen op één grote hoop gooien. Students are then what, 14, 15, 14, 15. And they have to decide, okay, what do I want to be in life? Because mm. they we have in Dutch we have profiles. Yeah. So you have like a technical profile or an economic profile. They have to choose that. So sometimes, not always, but sometimes students who for instance choose an economic profile. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult from that profile. Let's say that in year five they are like, oh no, you know what? Actually, I want to be a doctor. Yeah. Then they don't have the, the courses followed in year four and in year five. They're on a whole different track. They're, they're on a whole different track. In my opinion, students, they have to choose too early mm -hmm. what 
profile and therefore what direction they want to follow. Ik weet hier in Nederland moet je heel vroeg kiezen, een beetje over je paard of zo. Wat denk jij over die? Ja, ik vind het eigenlijk geen goed ding. Ik, uh, ik, ben, uh, ik heb nu een beetje goed gekeken naar andere landen hoe ze dat doen en dan uh, vind ik dat we in Nederland te snel een beslissing nemen. Dus dat je op een gegeven moment al vanaf je 11 of vanaf je 12 moet je al een keuze maken, wordt de keuze voor je gemaakt en dan zit je vast in een stroom waar je heel lastig uit kan. Dat kan wel. Ja, ik ben daar ook geen voorstander van uiteindelijk. Ik denk dat je daar heel te veel je, 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 je achtergrond en waar je opgegroeid bent meespeelt in de keuze die je eigenlijk voor je krijgt. Hoe heb je precies gestudeerd? In, in uh, economie. Hoe is je bewust dat ik wil dit doen? Ik wist het eigenlijk altijd al. Ik heb nog wel vandaag gedacht over rechten. Uh, maar ik heb economie altijd heel interessant gevonden. Ik lees nog steeds elke dag uh, economische artikelen. Ik luister naar economische podcasts. Dus ik wist eigenlijk altijd al van... Economie is gewoon echt wat ik wil gaan doen. Ja. En ik ben nog steeds blij met de keuze die ik heb gemaakt. Ja, leuk. Dus persoonlijk had je geen last van, uh, van een vroege leeftijd te kiezen wat, wat je moet studeren of wat je wilt doen in het leven. Ik heb nee. geen last van die. Nee, ik persoonlijk niet. Maar ik kan me heel goed voorstellen, als er genoeg mensen die natuurlijk niet weten op jonge leeftijd wat ze willen doen, dat het wel lastig is. En dat kan ik heel goed begrijpen. Dat als je jong bent en je denkt van, nou bijvoorbeeld voor mij, uh, op de middelbare school. Ik heb mijn hele middelbare schoolcarrière aard en onvoldoende gestaan voor wiskunde. En uiteindelijk voor mijn master ben ik best wel iets wiskundigs gaan studeren. En op een gegeven moment vond ik het eigenlijk wel heel leuk. Dus dat is voor mij echt veranderd. Dus ik kan, heel goed, ik kan me heel goed voorstellen dat voor heel veel mensen, wat ze vroeger toen ze jonger waren, heel leuk vonden. Uh, dat het later niet meer geldt. If you're lucky, and if you're, if you're intelligent, and if, you, if, you're, if you're good enough, and if you're the type of student that is very um, proactive, mm -hmm. then yes, you will, you, know, you will go have a failure at fees, and from there you will go to university. Mm -hmm. But... If you're maybe a little bit set back because of circumstances, because yeah. circumstances can change. And if something happens, for instance, in your private life or in, 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 with your parents, yeah. and there are certain setbacks and you go from Fivio to Hafo, and then it's a whole different... A whole different track of life that you're... Different track of life yeah. that, that, that students are, might, be, might be set up with. Yeah. That does not mean that, you know, you're set for life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can change. If you show that you are better mm -hmm. than, for instance, in HAFO at FIS or MBO at FIS, you can go to FIRIO. Yeah. Uh, and the reverse can happen as well. Ja, en ik denk ook nog één ding wat belangrijk is. Ik denk dat wij heel erg gefocust hebben in deze wereld, of in ieder geval Nederland uiteraard, op het uh, uh, VWO is het beste wat er is. En wij zijn heel erg gefocust om daarin, zeg maar, dat het meest succesvol is. Ik denk dat we veel meer moeten laten zien dat, ja, ook als je bijvoorbeeld MBO of een andere opleiding, wat dan niet uh, op dat, dat niveau is, dat het eigenlijk fantastische banen mee kan krijgen, dus dat veel meer daar moet promoten. We moeten niet neerkijken op een andere baan die met zijn handen werkt of wat dan ook. Dat zijn specialisten die vaak beter werken, meer nuttig werken dan ik doe, de hele dag achter een computer en een paar dingen in types. Ik denk dat we daar meer, veel meer waardering voor moeten hebben en ook daarin ja, dat mensen daar ook een bewuste keuze voor maken om die richting op te gaan. In plaats van zeggen, oké, okay, ik kan het hoger niet halen of het, en daardoor ga ik daar naartoe. Nee, je moet zeggen, oké, okay, dat vind ik leuk om te doen. Ik wil die kant op gaan. Talking about how someone at the lower levels might be perceived as not as intelligent. At the end of the day, these levels are split up based off of learning ability, but there's a lot of other things outside of your learning ability that demonstrates intelligence. Yeah, and, exactly. and it demonstrates, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be book knowledge. Exactly, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of things outside of your book knowledge yeah. gives you the opportunity to show you have intelligence. So what I good find about the system is that for people who want a more practical training, that they get a chance to develop further and develop something that is really good for them. And that they don't get stuck in a hockey stick in iets wat te theoretisch is, terwijl ze gewoon met hun handen willen werken. Ik vind het goed dat daar, dat daar ruimte voor is op de middelbare school en, en tijdens studie. Uh, maar ik vind wel dat als je eenmaal stel een beetje in het verkeerde bakje wordt geplaatst, is het, duurt het heel erg lang om daar weer uit te komen. Dan heeft het wel een negatieve impact en start je toch te laag en is het te moeilijk om dan toch weer een switch te maken. En heb je gebleven in dezelfde studie of heb je een switch gemaakt? Nee, ik heb een switch gemaakt. Dus ik ben begonnen op het mbo. Daar heb ik vier jaar op gezeten. Ik heb toerisme gestudeerd, een opleiding gedaan. En dat zat gewoon echt ver beneden mijn niveau. Maar je moet dat afmaken en dan pas kan je door. Toen ben ik dus naar het hbo gegaan. Dat duurt dan weer vier jaar. En toen ik daar klaar mee was, nou, toen was ik al acht jaar onderweg. En ik denk dat ik nog wel meer in mijn mars heb. Maar dan moet je weer een uh, vernieuw beginnen of een pre-master, master doen. Dus voordat je zeg maar op dat niveau bent waar je wil zitten of waar je misschien thuis hoort, yeah. ben je gewoon stel tien jaar onderweg. And it sounds like you're kind of in agreement that there's some unfairness to it, or the, the, what do you but think? yes, but the unfairness comes in in, in two uh, in two things. Mm -hmm. We we know because there is research based on that mm -hmm. that 
the assessment of students in primary school mm -hmm. is not always done fairly. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, is, there is research that shows that students from, for instance, children from parents who are academically educated, mm -hmm. they are generally placed uh, in, a higher, in a higher level. Yeah. So they are generally, they get like the FAO advice. Yeah. And research also shows that students who are from you know parents with a with a lower social economic background or yeah. maybe a, a foreign background mm -hmm. um, are placed in the lower levels. Mm -hmm. I mean I don't know why that is the case. Yeah. Is it because student uh, parents who are uh, from a university background are they more involved with their child's education mm -hmm. and therefore more um, prone to? Uh, motivate their child or stimulate their child in, 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 in at home instead of just only on, at school. Uh, do parents from maybe a foreign background, may, maybe they don't know the types of possibilities that there are, yeah. so maybe they are just not informed enough and maybe the language barrier adds to the fact that you know they are not informed enough and maybe it has less to do with the, with the students' uh, abilities. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need more research on that. And it's definitely, definitely it's something that is already on the radar because here in the Netherlands, we have a national coordinator for racism and discrimination. Mm -hmm. And it is something that is already on their, their, radar. their radar. For instance, my sister in Suriname, she was a FWO student. When my mother wanted to enroll her here in this country in a Dutch primary school, uh, they wanted, they didn't, they wanted to place her in MAFO, which is the same as MBO. It happens to a lot of students um, whose parents are maybe not as knowledgeable about their child's yeah. abilities. Yeah. And they don't question the advice that the school gives those, uh, those kids. Gotcha. Whereas my mother was a teacher, so she knew that her daughter had more in her yeah. than, uh, and the only reason why they uh, gave her that advice is because she came from a different country. Mm. But because my mom was adamant that she was placed in Ferio, my sister was placed in Ferio, and eventually she went to university, etc., etc. Gebruik je nog wat je hebt gestudeerd? Nee, ik, uh, ik gebruik helemaal niks meer. Ik doe nu een hele andere richting qua werken en zo. Wat ik nu doe vind ik eigenlijk veel leuker. En, uh, maar ja, dat, ik ben nu uh, bijna 23. En uh, ik begon de school toen ik, ik moest kiezen toen ik 17 jaar oud was. Dus ja, dat is heel, wel heel wat anders, zeg maar. Ja. En wat doe jij nu? Ik uh, werk nu als cameraman en uh, fotograaf. Uh, dat doe ik als freelance. En dan daarnaast uh, werk ik nog in de winkel. I'm curious, what would you say? I mean, I thought we kind of talked a lot about maybe some of the drawbacks to the system here, but what would you say are some of the pros? One of the pros is definitely workload, mm. because if you let uh, students choose earlier, they can drop a lot of subjects that they don't need. Mm -hmm. And subjects that, you know, if, if they choose well, it wouldn't have an added value for the rest of their course. Yeah, yeah that makes sense, because I think that is one of the drawbacks people talk about usually with the US system, Yeah, is that it's too general and everyone's doing too much of the same type of classes and for a lot of people, it's a waste because it's like, yeah, I have no interest in this specific subject. Yeah. Why am I doing this, you know? Yeah. Um, and that, that is definitely something I, I recognize. I guess one of the last things I want to ask about is, I'm curious, like, what is your view on how the future of the education system here in the Netherlands would look like? What are some of the changes that you expect going forward? Oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> um, honestly, I think that we need more research. The students that uh, were assessed at a specific, you know, got got an ad, a specific advice. What are they doing now mm -hmm. um, in life? Because mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to you have to imagine that we are talking about 10, 11, 12 year olds, and they this is the first time that they're doing such an extensive test uh, at stress, mm -hmm. um, at like blackouts, fear yeah. in, into the equation. In the HBO because I teach in HBO. We are going away, we're moving away from exams and testing mm -hmm. to more uh, deliverables like assessments and projects and mm -hmm. professional products. So there is a, at least in higher education, there is a, a shift it, it, there is a shift happening to- More practical yeah. type assessments yeah. and everything. Yeah. 
which to me makes a lot of sense. To... Yeah, and, and I think students will be even you know the youngsters they would be uh, they would benefit from that as well. I yeah. think because it is stressful for them. Yeah, I mean they're 10, 11, 12. So yeah, I mean I wouldn't cope with the stress at that age. Yeah. <laughs> My heart yeah. cope with it now, <laughs> let alone when I'm 10 or 11. Yeah. <laughs> so after working on this video for about a week, doing interviews, research online, and thinking about all the information, it's time to answer the question, do I still find a Dutch education system unfair? Yes or no? And the answer is slightly. Let me explain. What I like about the system is the idea, the principle, that basically not everybody has the same learning ability, not everyone has the same interest, so it tries to give you a very customized, very specialized learning experience. I like that. But the problem for me still is that this classification happens so young between getting placed in one of the three different groups and also kind of choosing your career path. I just feel like so much changes from that age that you have to decide those things or that it's decided for you to when you're an adult and you have more of an idea of yourself, your capabilities, etc. And I feel like the system doesn't really leave a lot of room for that growth to happen. And yeah, I know you can move up to the different levels, but at the end of the day, it's a lot harder to do so. And when you're like a team, you're not really thinking to go above and beyond. I know there's exceptions, but typically speaking, let's be real, that's not really your mindset. And so I feel personally, the system, the idea that once again, kind of having more of a specialized education, that's nice. But give people, give kids a little bit more time, a little more room to figure out themselves, learn more about themselves, and then decide those things. That's just my personal opinion. But let me know what you think. Let me know what your experience is like. Let me know if you agree, disagree. Please keep it friendly. Because this is all just me trying to learn, trying to figure it out. And I may be wrong with some stuff, but that's what we're here for, once again, to learn. Thank you for watching and to the next one.